Listen up, Vegas. Welcome to the slaughterhouse. Perfect. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the slaughterhouse. With me today is Gaz, Ken from Hello. Toy Connections, and our very special guest, Chris Miwa from Chasing 80s Toys. <laughs> are we still applaud are we still using the applauding thing or am I just gonna be awkward? Okay. That's fine. Cool. I, I don't mind being the awkward one. I usually am, so don't worry about it. I like how dedicated Gaz is to being in the chat because while on screen he still types in the chat. Gaz is the, the, the chat king. Oh, I think Ken's in there too, isn't he? I usually am, but not right now. I don't have I don't have my Chromebook and my cell phone set up. I'm literally in my garage because I got to escape in 25 minutes after trolling you guys for a little while, annoying the hell out of you. And then when I leave, you're all like, okay, thank God he's coming. Even when we've got a top tier <laughs> guest like Chris, Ken has to make this all about himself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because <laughs> Chris is Chris is your unassuming, humble guy. And, you know, he'll just wait until mm. I shut up. Like right now. You're right. Correct. All right. <laughs> Chris, welcome to the slaughterhouse, mate. It's uh, amazing to have you on here. Honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me over. Hello, boys from Ryan. Drew is in the chat. Hello, Kieran. Hello, Jeff. Scuba Pete, a special Scuba. shout out to Scuba Pete for uh, being a moderator for during Iconicon. Uh, thank you for wearing that badge of blue for me. Good to try Good to Gaz. <laughs> G hey, Gaz. Hey. <laughs> GeForce Racing 20. Hello, hello. That's a new face. Newish. Bjorn Jorgensen. Hello. Drew. I think I'll call it up. Oh, and Ken's in the chat too. Hello, Ken. What? Oh, I said that earlier. Sorry. I was like, did somebody <laughs> hack my account? <laughs> There's two of them. Oh, hang on. We have a last minute edition. Space Commander. How does everyone like their eggs? Sunny side oh. up like uh, Space Commander's hat. <laughs> Hello, Space Commander. Glad you could finally beam in. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was early this time, but apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning from Australia. Good evening where you are, Keith. In the UK. Hello, Keith. So I've given up my Sunday morning sleeping to hang out with these fine gentlemen. And uh, there's, I want to first of all state, Chris, I'm a big fan of Chasing 80s Toys. You want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your channel too, please? Oh, we also oh. do have a link to Chris's channel uh, in the description. So do jump over there and give that mm. a like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. Go for it, Chris. Tell us all about yourself. Hello there, I'm Chris and I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm on the other side of the globe of where Xazel is at the moment. Sun is going down over here, it's coming up over there and I'm so happy to be here. I've got a small little channel called Chasing 80s Toys and it's about toys, it's about cosplay and it's a little bit about music because I love all three of those passions and Chasing 80s Toys is not about me. I do it together with... Uh, Jeff Barker and Scuba Pete, and it's a platform for all my friends sharing all their adventures. So that's in short, <laughs> me and Chasing 80s Toys. Oh, we also got Spine Picks in the chat. Yo, Joe. Uh, yep, yeah, we're going to, we're, we're lining up a day where Scuba Pete can jump on and have a chat with us too. Uh, your Iconicon videos were a highlight for me. Thank um, you. Uh, there was uh, obviously Scuba Pete's uh, had the, the flag set up, that was very cool. But I also really enjoyed the Masters of the Universe video where you go through the origins versus the original ones, the classic stuff, yeah, uh, while well wearing this amazing outfit. What? <laughs> what? That is so good. Who is that? What is he doing well, in my yeah. toy room? What's he in there again? That's such a convincing cosplay that I just have to assume that you really are skeletal. <laughs> you boob! <laughs> Somebody hear that? Somebody else in here? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> there he is. There he is. 
There he is. Tell us, oh, tell us about. Oh, look, we've got uh, Tony in the chat. Much love for the sort of house and chatty there. Facing eighties toys. Thank you, Cheers, Tony. Uh, uh, Thank super you, Tony. appreciated, mate. Uh, we got a big, big shout Cheers, out Tony. to Tony too, uh, because he got us uh, invited onto Iconicon. Correct. And then Ken and I barely left. We, uh, yeah, we dug our heels in and stuck around for for the long haul. That was a great experience, excellent experience. And I was glad I got to share that experience uh, with you, Chris, uh, as well as uh, Scuba Pete and all the other fine fellows. Likewise, uh, likewise. that were part of Iconicon. Yeah. What a what a great what a great experience that was. Yeah, but, can't uh, say enough good things about uh, about Iconicon and everything they went through to kind of give the channels this size a level of exposure. Yeah. And ability to collaborate with future with, with people in the future, um, just couldn't be more grateful for everything that happened last week. Mm. Well, Iconicon gave me the courage to reach out to to Chris uh, and ask him to come up on this show because you, uh, you you just seemed like such a approachable person, um, and you were able to pronounce my name correctly. So two things that are <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Always a but I was, I was like, I've got to hit these boys up um, and and get them onto the slaughterhouse. Um, starting with starting with Chris, and I'll work my way to the other two team members of uh, Chasing Eighties. I'll do a, I'll do it the trilogy of Chasing Eighties toys and have everybody on. Cool, cool. But yeah. please do continue. Tell us about this amazing outfit. Yeah, it's warm. It's uncomfortable, but it's so much right. fun when you put on the hood and you get into that character. It's uh, it's a whole different world. Uh, yeah, you, you can't see Diddly Squat through that mask. You see the red LEDs there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, red LEDs don't do much good either. It's a bit of tunnel vision. Uh, you, uh, if any of you guys watch Stranger Things and those evil scenes in the dark, yes. uh, you know, yeah, that's sort of what I see, but then tunnel vision. So it's, it's yeah, it's it's so much fun in convention. I can imagine. Uh, walking around it as, as one of the coolest bad guys from the 80s, as I think he certainly is. I agree. You know, the, <laughs> he's so much fun, and I, I did the 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 Skeletor before with the original outfit. You know, the one that, that yeah, that the Skeletor wears as well. And then a good buddy of mine, Ron, helped me fabricate this battle armor version, and we went with that. And the colors pop so much on that armor. So, so it, well, just a quick shout out from Tony here saying Chris is awesome. I agree. Uh, <laughs> can vouch for uh, how much of a top bloke he is. Uh, yep. I agree cheers. with that. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Uh, Analog Toys couldn't see Diddly Squat on the Saturday night. <laughs> Was that because you're inebriated or? The well, battle the, well, damage the, the, is wicked. Well, the pile of Valiver's figures was probably taller than he was. So I think that's what well, he We have a request. Can we get a skeletal laugh? Ask JLS Comics. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> you boobs, <laughs> beast man! I cover my throne with your height. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. And yeah. I think JLS Comics is uh, due tomorrow for Cobra Convergence. I think their video is next, uh, Zazel. Oh, uh, perfect. Well, then definitely, yeah. uh, definitely subscribe to JLS Comics. Uh, I will be uh, tuning in to Cobra Convergence every every day that there's one, uh, which I think should be every day this month, right? Uh, except for uh, not on YouTube, some of them are uh, podcasts. So uh, they will be a later one for me to check out. Uh, well, Scuba Pete, Scuba Pete's a big fan. <laughs> Get a couple of reactions here. So, do you have uh, the ability to switch out the battle damage, or is this a one and done? One and done. This is one and done. Now, we haven't gone that far to do that yet, but who knows for the future? Skeletor is definitely one of my favorite <clears throat> cosplays that I have in my wardrobe at the moment, so he's definitely going to come out to many, many events in the future and might get some upgrades in the future, but who knows what else is to come. There's so much cool characters from the 80s that possibly could end up on my, uh, on my lineup. Who knows? 
Well, uh, well, first of all, as Spontick says, I always mention on my stream that my two go-to Joe channels are Slaughterhouse and JLS. Well, Spine Ticks, here's a hot tip, buddy. Go and check out Chasing 80s because they've got a bunch of awesome Joe stuff there. Um, so uh, definitely go and check them out too. Tell them the Slaughterhouse sent you. Uh, this is a good point. I've never seen Chris and Skeletor in the same place at the same time. Mm. That is a good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Like and Superman. Just saying, just saying. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you seen it? I highly recommend Spine Ticks too. I found them um, when they were doing some G.I. Joe stuff and haven't left. I've stuck around since. Mm. So uh, I think if you were going to create um, this outfit, then the best use for that chest piece is uh, definitely having the double battle damage. I think that just looks amazing. Hey, hey, go figure in the chat. Uh, so how much how much of this was actually created by yourself? Uh, the half a staff I'm wearing there, I created that uh, myself. Um, mm -hmm. The body armor, the, the armor you see there, that was created by my body run. And I created a skeletal outfit about three to four years ago. And then yeah, a good right. friend of mine, uh, Kim, uh, who also had a skeleton cosplay, was like, now I'm getting rid of this. Chris, do you want it? And I was like, yeah, I sure want it because it looked way cooler than the one I created. So I sort of mixed and matched bits in there. So it's uh, all of what I'm wearing is, is partly created by myself, and most of it is created by good friends of mine. So it makes it even more fun walking around like that. And Oh, yeah. To be honest, I'm not really a maker in the cosplay world. There's a lot of talented folk out there who create, who sue, who build the armor from scratch. Uh, 3D printing is a big thing in that world as well. I'm oh, yeah. really bad at all of those things. The part that I enjoy the most about costuming is acting, getting in the character, doing my homework before study the character. And then when I'm on that floor, I go full out at Skeletor or whoever I am, Captain Jack Sparrow. Just on Doctor Strange this week for the first time. I know. Yeah, yeah I saw and, that uh, one. That looked amazing. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Where'd you get yeah, the so, skull uh, from for the Havoc staff? That was uh, uh, a white plastic thing uh, from a Chinese order site uh, I bought oh, a long okay. time ago. I had it lying around, so I drilled some holes in there, get you know the, the, the part to hold it in there. Uh, get it in a different color and I'm still want to get LED lights into the Havoc staff as well. So that thing really glows up. So that's another upgrade oh, that's cool. to come in the future. So I was worried yeah, that maybe so... there was a farmer out there looking for it, looking for one of his uh, <laughs> sheep or one of his goats or something. <laughs> it's the wolf. No, it's not the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> if we see, nice. if job, we see a woolly costume next though, if we see a woolly costume, we know, we know that he's skinned it. Skulls, skulls are us. Well, I mean, with Skeletor, you need at least two skulls for a complete costume, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One oh, to wear, he's... one to hold. He's so much fun. It's definitely one from the six I have at the moment in my lineup. Skeletor is definitely top of my favorites there. Every time I, I, <laughs> I put it on, it's not as comfortable, but once I'm in character and I'm enjoying my interaction with the people on comic cons and events it's just great it's just great yeah love it have you got a favorite character that you've uh, cosplayed as while out and about uh i got a few favorites um captain jack sparrow is definitely one of my favorite i'm a big fan of the work of, that johnny depp does with all his character and i really want to keep that captain jack sparrow character alive that's one of the reasons i do that yeah, yeah. Uh, Skeletor is a favorite. I'm working on Iron Man now. Oh, cool. So okay. we're going to get a Mark VI armor later this year. Uh, so that's that's coming too. Uh, I'm so, not going to uh, build that myself. Tell you in advance. I'm not that skilled. Uh, it's going to be built by Paul in America. He's oh, uh, nice. creating it, working on it as we speak. So, hope so you're going to get the, tri the triangular reactor in the middle. That's right. Wow. You know your armor, uh, Ken. <laughs> I know a lot of things that aren't very useful out in the real world, but make it onto streams like this. So, 
So I got to, I've got to, I've got to bring up the fact that you've got such, and you've got some of it's behind you with the, uh, I can see most of the GI Joe stuff behind you there, but you've got also in this one, uh, just a enormous collection of Masters of the Universe. So yeah. tell us about your collecting experience um, from where you grew up. And that's my wall of Motu behind me. Yeah, that's over there. Now I, I thought I would position myself with my Joe stuff behind me for your channel today, but I will bring you solo layouts. We can check out some of this Joe There's stuff. A lot of Joe stuff. Well, a lot. There's far bigger collections than this, of course, but this is my I'm Joe for corner. Slaughter. Where's Sarge at? Yeah, I see a whale. I see a oh, there we go. Are. He's here with me. He's <laughs> here with me. So uh, there's another Sarge uh, behind me. You yeah, need an engine see. cover. I need an engine cover. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But and you got the Joe have... You got the Joburg shirt. That's yeah. Of course, I'm always. Uh, you will not never see me wearing a shirt of my own channel. I'm not going to do that. I'd rather, you know, enjoy wearing t-shirts of other channels, promoting, doing shout-outs for others. That's what I'm far more easy with doing. Um, but well, yeah, Chris, missing got... the yeah. Chris, Go I've got an uh, engine cover. I'll send you away, buddy. Oh, cheers, Matt. I just wanted to say from I really don't care that stuff are incomplete. I love buying incomplete stuff and then going on a hunt for months or up to a year to getting it complete. That's where I get the most enjoyment from. But I'm not going to say no to that. So cheers, mate. Is that the American release of the Triple T or is that a... I, well, I'm not an yep. expert about these things. How can I tell? Oh well, it'll uh, the USA sticker on it is um, at least a dead giveaway. But there is, yeah. um, you could get a Canadian version. You can get an Action Force version. I know that there were some other stickered variations. I think this was sold in Europe. Oh, and yeah. We got the American stuff, um, if I'm not mistaken, from '87 on. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. that's uh, so. This should be a US uh, US one. Is there a difference with? Uh, Besides the stickers, or no, not really, no. But it's a cool, it's a cool bit. Yeah, I had to have him up here when I come in your stream, of course. Oh, I appreciate it. Now, please continue. Tell us about your collecting experience. Uh, my collecting experience. Well, I started collecting at a young age. Uh, I told the story on other channels, but maybe it's fun to tell it here. Uh, my first moment of starting collecting was the day a master of the universe figure entered the house and that was he man uh unfortunately he wasn't meant for me he was for my brother's birthday so my parents hid him away that's where i found it wasn't supposed to find it stay off it's not for you it's for your brother then that birthday came and my brother was like oh that's cool and he threw it away he wasn't really interested in it and that's <laughs> when i of course grabbed it and that was the start of my collecting because ever since until the day of today i've i've never stopped collecting toys uh of course you got them as a kid uh and i, and I bought them myself later on but th there are no gaps in my collecting history ever since and yeah that motu figure he man that started it off and there were some legos and adventure people before that but <clears throat> i remember getting real conscience of an action figure and toy lines and stuff like that. When I got that He-Man figure, that must have been must have been four or five years old at that time. Right. Well, it made that much of an impact uh, mm -hmm. that it made you a, a lifelong action figure fan. Oh, definitely a fan of the 80s toy lines for sure, because there's so much goodness coming out of that era. And I was the type of kid, when I saw a commercial on Saturday morning cartoon, I was into it. Then I saw oh, another yeah. commercial after the other cartoon. I was, oh, that's cool. I want to have that. And so, yeah, I was all over the place. I was that kind of a kid. And the collection I've built around me is best described as a best of music album with all those greatest bands from the 80s. That's nice. what's happening around me here in the toy room. Chris Miwa, <laughs> greatest hits. Love it. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the fun things about watching cartoons was that the commercials during the cartoons continued that experience uh, where you got to see what all the cool stuff that was coming out, um, all the cool ads that came out at that time. You don't see us, you don't see anything like that today. But I guess uh, it's a bit hard um, with the way that you know streaming services work. But yeah, so have you got a favorite version of He-Man? 
a favorite version of He-Man? Um, not really. I like all of them. I do have a favorite version of Skeletor, of course. All right. And, yes. And, and that's the... Oh, I can't reach him. It's too far away. That's the Dragon Blaster Skeletor. So all that's right. The one with a dragon on his back with a water yeah, yeah. pump action feature. Uh, changed there. And that's, that's definitely my favorite version of Skeletor. And maybe... Who knows? I'm going to cosplay that once I've figured out what to do with the dragon and how to operate it because all of that's got to work, of course. That would be pretty cool. So Scooby Pete says Chris has a video from his childhood opening his Chaos for Grey Skull and other toys. So lucky to have that documented, I'll say. Oh, cheers, Pete. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that on your channel? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, very early on when I started with my YouTube channel with, with uh, 80s toys, I've got an enormous database which I'm lucky to have because my dad and uncles filmed a lot on those big VHS cameras back in the day. Oh yeah. And all that footage is, is, is all on, on those VHS tapes. And I start, you know, digitizing those VHS tapes and there's a lot of eighties footage with toys. So I thought, yeah, I can keep that for myself. Well, it's way more fun sharing that stuff because you hardly see it on uh, YouTube. So yeah, that's, true. so I got a playlist on the chasing eighties channel with, uh, uh, some footage from VHS opening mask. Uh, you see me get the oh, Cobra cool. Rattler. Uh, you see me with some Black Star toys, Motu toys, of course, and, and the Grayskull one that Pete just mentioned. Well, uh, there's a there's a comment here saying, uh, I agree my mum may have pictures of Christmas and birthdays, but I really don't have any documentation of my childhood toys. I've got photos of Christmas and birthdays where I'm opening up my toys, but we didn't really have... Um, uh, camcorders or anything like that when I was growing up mm. uh, they were yeah meant for others not for me so yeah but, uh, that's cool we'll definitely check that out um, maybe Scuba Pete can send a link if he's not busy <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so as far let's go around then and uh, Gaz have you got a favorite uh, version of He-Man or Skeletor uh, I guess like he's either? the original it like either, either or the original ones, I guess the first two. Oh, both. Oh, yeah. they're, they're iconic. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Ken? I am going to cop out and say my 2008 Classics one while riding Battle Cat, just because it looks so cool <laughs> with the extra articulation and the scale. You <laughs> schmuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm you a schmuck, to I'm, I'm a schmuck that's going to bounce in two minutes, so you can, you know, I, I figured a cop-out answer was in, uh, was in order. <laughs> Moving on, Space <laughs> Commander. What's your favorite version of He-Man and uh, Skeletor? Well, uh, casting my mind back, um, when, when uh, uh, Masters of the Universe figures uh, first took off in the UK where I grew up, um, my younger brother, he actually had uh, the original He-Man figure first um, because the first figure I asked for was Ram Man. Um, I, I liked the way that he was a totally different body type to all the other characters. I liked the way he looked different and um, yeah, yeah. different weaponry. Um, so my first request was for Ram Man. So this gave my younger brother the opportunity to say, well, I'm having He-Man. <laughs> okay, you can have He-Man, that's fine. So he had He-Man <laughs> first, um, but then my first, I think I actually had Faker uh, before oh, a He-Man yeah. figure because, because again, Faker was very different. I know it's the same body type as He-Man, but the fact that he was uh, different and he had this uh, blue coloration um, and also I, I had seen one of, the, one of the Faker figures hanging on the peg in the shop. Uh, the the uh, shoulder pads weren't quite in the right position, and it was actually revealing the tape machine under his uh, on on his chest. Um, right. And I wasn't sure if if all the fakers had that or not. So I was like, I want this one. I want this one because this one's definitely got something <laughs> weird and different about it. So yeah, yeah, so again, cool. it was the fact that it was something something weird and different. Um, and it was also cool because I didn't have to pay for that uh, that figure because if I had. I was a bit of a swat at school and I had scored some tests really well and they gave me a voucher. So I was able to buy it with oh, a voucher. Nice. Um, but for actual He-Man himself, my first actual proper He-Man figure was uh, the battle damage He-Man with the drum in the chest that rotated. Uh, that yeah, was the yeah. first He-Man I got. Um, I actually had the original Skeletor, that the actual, you know, first ever, you know, the, the original wave, uh, wave Skeletor figure. Um, but my, my younger brother one day, um, uh, he was like, 
well, look, the, 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 the paint on Skeletor's face is a tiny flake here. I wonder if I can leave us some scissors under that and lift his face off. <laughs> which he then which he then did right rather than think to himself just because i can do something doesn't mean i should yeah. he kind of went oh i think this will work and off came the face and I, i've since seen um i think it's toy polloi they were talking about ways of of uh repainting <laughs> the face so maybe one oh, day yeah. I'll, I'll get him restored and repaired but um a couple of years later the dragon blaster skeletor came out Mm. And at this point, I couldn't find the original Skeletor anywhere. I, I didn't. I, I don't think I realised as a kid that toys came out in waves, and that once the wave was sold out, you weren't going to get it back. Um, uh, so uh, I, I couldn't find an original replacement Skeletor anywhere. But I saw the Dragon Blaster Skeletor, and I figured, wait a minute, if you take the armour off and the dragon and everything, it's the same figure underneath. Um, so I took that figure once once i had that figure and i turned that into my original skeletal um but the the fact that he had the squirting dragon and the actual metal chains was really cool mm. so mm, i did yeah. used to change it up sometimes Som sometimes he would be the original skeletal sometimes he'd be a dragon blaster skeletal um <laughs> but like i say maybe maybe one day maybe one day um if i can get some lessons from toy Polo or someone uh, or someone who can hold a paintbrush without a hand shaking like i do maybe i can get someone to restore my original one so Thanks to my little brother for that. Cheers, chap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ken's gone. Uh, I think he's uh, gone to cry uh, after Tony's comment. But uh, thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for coming into the chat, uh, Tony, and getting rid of Ken for us. I, don't, I didn't have the heart to do it. <laughs> yeah. So my favorite uh, He-Man, uh, we, we started with the original... He-Man waves, as far as I can remember, I definitely have photos of me having the um, those that He-Man and that Skeletor specifically um, with Castle Grayskull. But my favorite version of He-Man was the Thunder Punch He-Man. Oh, cool! And uh, it's still my favorite to this day. Uh, yeah, Toy Poloi, he he can do some stuff. Like he can do some really amazing things. And sometimes it's not what you expect. Um, and I'll say while I'm giving while I'm giving them a shout out. Uh, go figure also are very good uh, at that sort of stuff too, uh, recreating and re and fixing up some of that stuff. So go go check out those two. Um, but yeah, so Thun I didn't really have a favorite Skeletor, but if I did, I guess it would have been the battle damage one just because of the gimmick of it, you know. It's a great one, right? Right? <laughs> Again, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a cool figure, yeah. What I liked about uh, your uh, Iconicon Masters of the Universe video, Chris, was that it it, it wasn't really trying to say, uh, well, at least my interpretation of it was that you weren't really trying to say one was better than the other, but it really highlighted how they can both sort of uh, work together mm -hmm. as, a, as a substitute line or as a complementary line to your already you know, whatever you've already collected in the original lines. Unless I completely misunderstood the, the idea of that video, that's what I took away from it. But uh, so tell us, tell us a little bit about uh, your collecting uh, with, the, with the new stuff, the new origin stuff. Oh, I love it. The, the moment Pete and I were talking and the, the, the origin stuff came out and we were like, are we going to go all in for this line? <laughs> yeah, we are. And yeah, we try. I think we're going for everything that comes out, uh, almost everything that comes out. It's such a great line. And like you say, the both the vintage and the origins enhance each other. I can fill up gaps that I have in my vintage collection now with figures from the origins line that are actually affordable. So right. I, I didn't have the Sorcerer less or, uh, yet or, or Scareglow. Now those gaps are filled and it, yeah, I'm looking at, at it right now. It's all mixed and matched a bit over here at, at this time. It works perfectly. And that's what we try to right. show in that video, Peter and me. Like, you know, you can intermix these two lines and they go so well together. So that was why when Pete was talking about the land shark and he had a vintage Skeletor and an origin Skeletor and Mitch maxed them with, you know, the land sharks or with the battle cats and the E-Man. It works perfectly. It's all in scale. Yeah. So uh, I, I do want to I do want to say Scuba Pete was also in that video. Uh, so shout out to Scuba Pete. 
but the <laughs> I think the cards really help as well that they look <clears throat> like a lot like the old style. Yeah, right. That is the worst yeah. straight off in my opinion. But uh, <laughs> love that Chris has a Joe Berg shirt on. Yeah, yeah. I have a straight off story yeah. if you got time. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for it, Space Commando. Go for it. Well, I'll try and keep it short, shall I? When I was a kid, no, no, uh, well, I think we, we've <laughs> we've mentioned before about how uh, my mum had all these mail order catalogs from when we were kids back in the eighties, um, before the internet, of course. And um, I, uh, I I remember really clearly uh, that in one of the uh, catalogs there was a photograph of all the He-Man figures set up, and they had like a scene built up with Castle Grayskull and so on. And there was a Stratos in that photograph who was kind of a tan kind of brown color it's got kind of kind of a suntan look um and uh you know i can still remember it quite clearly this was definitely uh something I, that i saw and I, I wish i kept the book now as proof because no one believes me <laughs> but uh i i found out years later that um sometimes the the photographs used in catalogs were actually like pre-production uh kind of mock-ups that the figures weren't you know going to be the actual one that was released and right. um, sure enough, it turned out that uh, in the early designs for Stratos, he was kind of like this suntan Stratos, I call him, this kind of uh, almost naked kind of look. And um, I, I, I even asked my mum, because I, I didn't understand. I was only a little boy. I didn't understand how these things worked. I said to my mum, can you please write to the catalogue and tell them we <laughs> want to buy Stratos, but I want that one, the kind of tan right. brown one. Because I, I was always after the thing that was different and unusual. So I was like, can you ask them cool. if they can give me that one? And my mum was like, I don't think that's how it works. And, and sure enough, I, it, it didn't happen as a kid. <laughs> However, many years later, when um, the uh, before Origins happened, um, they started making the uh, reactions, uh, reaction um, Super 7. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Figures. And um, at, at first, I, I really liked the look of them because, of course, they're three and three quarter inch, five points of articulation, which is my go to. But, but I guess because of my age, you know, that's my go to action figure. And um, I really liked the look of them, but they were kind of expensive. And I was thinking, oh, do I want to get involved in this? I don't know, man. And then I saw this guy and I was like, I'm there. Right. <laughs> Suntan oh, Stratos. Cool. I th Suntan Stratos actually exists. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this this thing I saw when I was a kid, although it's a, a different scale, yeah. um, it actually does exist. And uh, as I said, I had uh, at this point done a little reading and found that Although I can't find any evidence anywhere of this photograph, all I have is my memory of it. Um, I have learned that they, the catalogs did use like um, early production or pre-production or prototype figures mm. uh, for their photography. Um, then, of course, Origins came out. And um, uh, again, similar thing. I thought they looked kind of cool. But uh, again, did I want to get into it? It's, you know, it's probably going to be an expensive hobby. And the first few figs they brought out didn't look like the classic ones. If you remember, there was a different sculpt for He-Man's face and Skeletor and Teela's, Teela's knees looked a bit funny. So at first I wasn't sold on it. Then when I started to see some figures come out that I really did like, and they started using the, the classic He-Man face and the classic Skeletor face. And I thought, wow, these do look, they fixed the problem with the knees. And I thought these really do look like the ones we had as kids. Because uh, all my He-Man figures are at my parents uh, down in down on Earth. Um, and I thought, uh, I'd, I'd like to get some to have it in the space station up here with me. Um, but every time I went home to England and uh, visited any toy shops, they didn't have them. I couldn't find them anywhere. Uh, no matter how, you know which shops I looked in or how far I could see them, I could see them available on the in, on the internet. But a, they can be pricey, and B, you yeah. can't actually look, pick the thing up, and look at it, and make sure you're getting one with a decent right. bubble, the cards intact, it's not scuffed or scratched or anything. Um, sure. But just recently, the last time I was down in England, um, me and my missus were walking around uh, like a discount shop, and uh, bizarrely, strangely, out of the blue. I picked up these two guys. Oh, well, check that out. Nice. So I got lucky yeah. with those two guys. And then, although I bought it online, I saw this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. I cannot so believe I finally got one. Favorite version of Stratos. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I know it's weird. If 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 if, if he had become my favourite in my adulthood, I would be asking some questions about uh, my life choices. Um, right. But as this was uh, a memory from childhood, you know, before you've established any kind of sexuality, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I see it as being a, a reminder of my uh, childhood years. Uh, not anything yeah, to do yeah, with being yeah. an adult, I, I assure you. <laughs> um, well, but yeah, they've Kenny started doing... Story. Um, Feel good story they've, for the uh, start... I never thought I was That's ever going right. to from anyone ever. <laughs> well, that that kind of looks like the Hawkman from Flash Gordon. Yeah. Yeah, That's so that's all right. Oh, all um, good. Voltan. Voltan, uh, played by Brian Blessed. I got I got him to autograph yeah. a Flash Gordon comic with him on the front cover. Shut up. Oh, no, no he, wow. he was so cool. He was such a cool guy. Oh, man. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> then COVID well, came sorry. along and we, uh, we couldn't go any signings anymore. Uh, <laughs> we did a we did a shout out to your to your channel. Go figure. I don't know if you saw it uh, when talking about your custom stuff. Big fan of your custom stuff. Um, and shout out to Laser Pants, who's also in the chat. How are you, good buddy? Great, uh, yeah, great so audience I, tonight. Great audience we got tonight, guys. Oh, I think so. Best of the bunch. Uh, Fellow beard bros, uh, yeah. So I did not, I did not anticipate that I would have somebody give me a feel-good story about naked straddles. That will go down in infamy, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to now <laughs> because I do have that, that. That's the only version of Stratos that I have in my collection. So now I'm going to look at that and think Space Commander and think back on that awesome memory that you have. It'd be interesting to see the. Um, that that image uh from the catalog um as well but thanks for sharing i, that story I wish space. i still had it no it's yeah. all right but well, i assure you it's far it's and a, wide. It, sorry say again well the internet is far and wide i'm sure we can find that image somewhere it should be out there and what if you would have gotten that figure as a kid you would have got one of the most expensive expensive prototype figures in the whole line <laughs> if you would have gotten that figure and somehow and that's the thing as a kid, I wouldn't have realized it was worth anything. and I wouldn't have cared either. I would have just uh, yeah. played the hell out of it. It's uh, oh, yeah, kind of like my, um, my, <laughs> like my my German Action Force figures. Like, uh, you know, as, as I was saying to Zazel a while back, I didn't realize there was anything unusual or, or different about it. In fact, I thought it was a, a factory misprint or something. But now I know that it's actually one of the um, more sought-after ones. But it's not for sale. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, the whole Stratos thing, I, I, I want to assure you, the whole thing about Stratos is it does come from a childhood, infant, right. prepubescent, non-sexual right. memory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, so Chris, how, how yeah. hard are they to find uh, over where you are? Are they, are they on store shelves? We don't have as many great toy stores over here in the Netherlands, unfortunately, one of the, those big chains of toy stores or, or Walmarts or stuff like that, Darks, we don't have any of that in the Netherlands. So I've got a handful of toy stores, mostly online, Yeah, uh, where I buy my toys, where I get my origins. That's where I get them. And one of them, uh, old school toys, great toy store. Uh, you, you, they get them fairly easy, uh, easy early. I mean, uh, so I just got a Roton before Joe, uh, before Joe Fest started at Iconic on start. I got a Roton and I got a few other figures that I was still looking for, like the Horde Trooper and uh, what was the other one again? Um, Yeah, and then another figure from, from one of those last waves. So I'm up to spe spec now, and this one was a gift from a good buddy of mine, Bob Hansen, who I don't know how he knew that I was still looking for this one. And uh, yeah, I'm all up to spec now with the wave, with uh, with this wave, where, where you got Jitsu, you got Blood Up, oh, yes. Sorceress. So, uh, yeah. Well, we don't. We don't have them. Oh, we'll just, just quickly, Scuba Pete uh, says, I just Googled naked Stratos catalog pick and Moku did not pop up. <laughs> no. Send, send links because uh, Space Commander might be interested in that. We don't know. We don't know. Actually, the, the, whole story, the whole story was a ploy just to get Scuba Pete to Google that. It, it, was, a, it was a trick. 
No. There was no catalog when I was a kid. The whole thing was made up just to trick him. <laughs> and the, the image online is you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, please send the link. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, in Australia, uh, we probably have only really seen uh, some of the later waves. He-Man, Skeletor, and Battle Cat were, you know, they were okay enough, you know, in the in the store shelves to be able to pick those up fairly easily. Battle Cat is still on store shelves now, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's almost impossible to find them here. Most of mine came from. I want to say most of them came from Ken. Ken definitely got me back into collecting them. Uh, so I think I've got everybody now that I need. Uh, well, I mean, other than certain, like I don't have uh, the original Stratos. I've got the new one. So as far as characters are concerned, I've got every character mm. except for Trapjaw. That guy is a pain to get. Yeah. So I've got, um, I do have the... Uh, what was that? What was the two pack with uh, Keldor that came with a That's, humanoid uh, version of Trapjaw? Kronos and Keldor, this one. Was it I got Kronos? Right, 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 right. Yeah, Thanks yeah, yeah. Thanks to Gogetron for this one because this is uh, was also impossible to get at the time in the Netherlands. So uh, I got some help from my friends. Excellent. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a great. It's yeah, it's a great set, and I especially love the artwork on all these these boxes. This is oh, really. Yeah. I the remember. skeletal head on that one looks pretty good too, with the sort of the uh, the eyes. Yeah, like they're growing eye. almost. Yeah. Um, oh, I've is that, that the one that's based there. on the Alfredo Alcala artwork? So, sorry to interrupt. Um, I think that the jeweled eyes. I think that's based on the Alfredo Alcala artwork that he did for the original mini comics. I think oh, so. There you yeah. Go. I'm yeah, sorry, guys. Commander, still dealing with a satellite it. delay. <laughs> no, no, all good. <laughs> so I did get that that uh, two pack. Uh, from a friend of mine um, and uh, from Nick. Thanks, Nick. And uh, I think if I can, I'm going to take the stuff off of the Masters of the WWE universe. Uh, who has the Trapjaw stuff on them? It, Isn't it the Stone Cold one? If I remember correctly. Uh, uh, he, yeah, Stone Cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone Cold's got that gear. I'm hoping I can put most of that onto... Onto him and make oh, my own yeah. trap jaw, and then I think I've got everybody. Then, but uh, I, I actually I don't have Orco, and I don't oh. I use I use Orco from the yeah Stone Cold the Rattlesnake Stone Cold. <laughs> um, I'm mm. using a different Orco for mine because I think Orco scales too big mm. for the Masters of the Universe Origins, so I use one from a different. Uh, toy line which i can never remember it's basically like they brought out a bunch of muscles of the universe in like a little scale like little tiny ones mm -hmm. and i think that orco fits better with this scale mm -hmm. i can never remember who created them and every time i look it up i'm like oh yeah that's the guys but i can't remember who it is now they came mm -hmm. in little boxes sometimes blind boxes anyway doesn't matter but anyway, I think it looks better uh, in scale. So, Chris, let's go and talk some G.I. Joe. Because oh, yeah. uh, in your country, you had a different name for Sergeant Slaughter, right? Sergeant, yeah. I want to say Sergeant Slammer, but that's in the UK, I believe. We had uh, Sergeant Driller. Right, Sergeant Driller. Driller. <laughs> so, you know, I guess he's a drill, drill sergeant, sergeant, right? Yeah, he's yeah, a drill yeah. sergeant, so that's... Sense. That's what the Dutch did with it. It's almost it's almost sounds South Africa, Sergeant Driller. <laughs> right? Yes, true. Uh, so, what other? Do you know of any other name changes that you guys got? I know that's a pretty oddball question to throw out. No, there. it's not because I have the brochure in front of me from the Netherlands. Uh, oh, is, perfect! Uh, He's come prepared. I've come prepared. <laughs> this this is my first interaction with G.I. Joe in the Netherlands. This was into a Transformer comic. There was this poster, and that was oh, in cool. 87, mm, cool. because 87 was the year we got all these. On, we, we had the pellet of uh, Action Force before uh, in the Netherlands, but then it became G.I. Joe over here, and they went all out. Uh, some of the names which are fun. Uh, Shipwreck is called Scheepswrack. In the Netherlands, 
Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, this is a fun one. Storm Shadow. He's called Blixemschicht. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which, okay. Which is uh, that rolls which, off which, yeah, yeah, that translates to lightning. Maybe it's easy. Okay. Uh, uh, as fast <laughs> as lightning. Yeah. <laughs> not, a, not a fun one. Uh, Doctor Mindbender. If you get it, you get it. Doctor Mindbender in the Dutch. Of, it's in Dutch is called Doctor Hersenspuler. Okay. <laughs> what, we know the and translation on that. <laughs> Uh, that sounds it's like a mad scientist. Brainwash, Dr. Brainwash. <laughs> okay. That's, that's how we think it is. And it goes on. Do you, do you have anyone you want to ask the name from the... Shockwave. He's yeah, not yeah. on this poster, man. He's not <sighs> on here. I, should uh, I need to get the Benelux catalog that Joe Burke featured on that channel. Day. Beachhead. Beachhead. He's uh, called... I should know this from my head. Stavast, he was called. Oh, which Star means uh, stand your ground if you translate that to okay it's actually a good name so what about leatherneck he must be on there right yeah he's on there leatherneck it's uh here he is he's <laughs> he's called a after an insect in dutch tor which is a beetle okay go figure yeah i don't know why that the, i don't know how they came up with that so that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it, it's fun you know it's it's <laughs> what the let's <laughs> read <laughs> Dr. Hasselhoff <laughs> Dr. Hasselhoff but yeah, yeah. Wallaroo, Wallaroo uh, how did Sarge shout out to Hoodie go I missed it well you can actually go back and watch it uh, it's on my uh, Cobra Convergence kickoff video mm. uh, there's actually a there is a special shout out from Sergeant Slaughter uh, to uh, HCC there's also an interesting uh space commander video in there uh because it leads <laughs> off with cobra commander so definitely check that out i'm just gonna look uh, yeah, up what uh, shockwave is called now because i have the brochures over here oh nice have you got a brochure of naked uh, stratos available uh <laughs> I, I have a lot of that motor stuff so i'm and, definitely have to and what was into that but... and what was his touch name <laughs> yeah, what was his last name? Moody. <laughs> <laughs> Naked bird, yeah. Uh, where, is, where is he again? Shockwave number eight. He's called Schokholf. That, that's from the 90 brochure that Joe Burke featured. Mm. So Schokholf, he's called that. Nice. Uh, so, there should yeah. be the Warthog and Sergeant Slaughter in that catalog too, right? That is an amazing image of the Warthog. Yeah, I'm looking in for it beach. already. Where is that? Is it? It's not at the beginning, is it? I think it's halfway through. Yeah. Yeah, halfway. Through. Oh no, no, it is at the beginning. That's this. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. let me let me just bring that up. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. Look at that beauty. These brochures Eesh. were were a work of art, and oh yeah, the same with what Space Commander was talking about with those toy catalogs at the time. They really went to town creating those dioramas and sparkled the imagination of those kids watching those toy brochures they really knew what they were doing and you don't see stuff like that anymore in toy brochures i think no uh that was part of the fun too uh getting the toy catalog in the mail uh checking out the toy stores and having aisle upon aisle of toys uh yeah i miss i miss the good old days but thankfully we've got chasing 80s to to bring us back <laughs> through, the, through the days, the good old days. Uh, we all do our bit. We all do our bit. It's it's not chasing all these toys. Who's doing that? <laughs> I'm hey, looking, um, for, looking for that brochure right now uh, while we chat, but see if I find it in this compilation. While we're waiting on that, let's go around and talk about who our favorite G.I. Joe character is. I'll go ah, last cool. because mine's a surprise. Gaz, <laughs> Gaz. <laughs> Gaz, who's your favorite G.I. Joe, buddy? And Cobra, no, my, my my favorite my favorite Joe is Shockwave. Because yeah, yeah. He, he's not a it's not military, he's like civilian police officer, SWAT mm, team cool. guy. Yeah, yeah. And I guess my favorite Cobra I'm just gonna go with a basic Viper. Hashtag oh, yeah. Team Viper. Team Viper, uh, yeah. <laughs> woo. Rest uh, in peace, yeah. Rick. Rest in peace, Rick. Yeah. What about you? Uh, we'll jump over to Space Commander. Favorite 
G.I. Joe, this is going to be harder for you because you're all action force, but do your very best to give us some of your favorite bendy figures. <laughs> My favorite bendy figures. Okay, well, uh, as, as you uh, surmised, of course, if we're including action force, it, it's got to be uh, Space Commander, of course, the original. Of course. Who inspired me to become Space Commander. Um, but uh, then when they started bringing in, um, the, uh, the, like you say, the bendy figures into action force, um, one of the first ones I picked up was uh, Flash. Wow, because yeah, cool, man. He, he came. He came with a. He came with a laser gun, and for me, yep. that was uh, that was uh, enough of a science fiction element to to draw me in. Um, I also liked uh, Ripcord here because of uh, again that sort of diving from high in the atmosphere down to earth. That kind yeah, of. Yeah. Uh, Although it's you know you know it's a real world thing to skydive, it had that kind of again science fiction type quality to it that appealed to me. Um, uh, but then when uh, when um, Hasbro uh, took over completely and was then just s straight shipping GI Joes and no longer any Power Toys, um, the uh, I think a couple of the first ones I got, uh, I had uh, let's have a look here. I had Hans crank case because he came, he came with the oar striker. It's Hans Chow here. Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hans and, Chow, uh, also... uh, as, a, as a channel member, you should get, you should be able to see a link to join us in the chat. Channel members get a Streamyard link to join us. And Ooh, Hans Chow cool. is a channel member, so if you're free, uh, check the uh, members tab uh, for the link if you want to join us. <laughs> yeah. So I got bazooka. Oh, uh, yeah, Bazooka cool. was pictured on the uh, on the box for the Silver Mirage, um, but he didn't actually come with it. So I, I got him separately to, to put him on the bike. As I say, Crankcase came with the Oar Striker, so I didn't need to get him separately. Um, interestingly enough, I got the um, uh, that now in the in the UK where I grew up, the version two Snake Eyes was the first Snake Eyes we got. The version one Snake Eyes was not released at the time as Snake Eyes. It came as mm. part of Action Force, and it was um, he was called Stalker, and uh, he was from right. Scandinavia. So the first sort of out-and-out uh, -out Snake Eyes we got was uh, version two. But the the interesting thing there is, oh, don't forget the pooch. <laughs> yeah, right. but I remember as a as a kid, I, the reason I wanted this figure was because I had more. Uh, goodies than baddies mm. and um in the comic recently uh, at that time uh, in recent memory uh zartan had been in disguise as snake eyes so i asked for snake eyes so that i could use him as zartan so i actually used this character here this figure here to to fill out the ranks of the villains well, that's actually but, really uh, cool yeah that's really yeah. cool so uh of course, now of course, I, I now of course he's my Snake Eyes. Uh, but yeah, it was it was right. a case of mixing mixing and matching, and uh, you know, taking the hand oh, figures and the Palatoy figures. Oh, oh yeah, I'll bring you closer so you can show us those laser command. Yeah, wow. It's, uh, yeah, nice. red laser and Cobra Commander, and um, just uh, mixing and matching, having the you know having your old school sort of army figures and just sort yeah, of yeah. mixing and matching them you know mix and match them with your with your hasbro mm. figures you know see which ones go together best brilliant stuff space commander question when you got those figures oh. in the uk for pelotoy did you have the four packs as well S sorry say again? Got, uh, back in the day uh, before gi joe came to the uk did you got those four packs of action force figures where they got you know, the, the stalker and other figures uh, combined with five points of articulation with the the Joe figures, because that's how we got them here in the Netherlands. Uh, before we got G.I. Joe, we were at a point of transition where they put those four packs out with G.I. Joe figures with all their points of articulations and the Action Force figures in there with their five points of articulation. Right, yeah. I, I've seen pictures of those, but uh, as a kid, I never saw them in, in the shops like that. Mm -hmm. So um, may, maybe in some maybe in some markets they did sell them together like that. But from my own personal experience, I never I never saw that myself firsthand. 
Uh, Scuba Pete. That's right, Scuba uh, Pete. Yeah, they play well together. <laughs> so, Chris, tell us who your favorite Joe and Cobra are. Oh, well, yeah, I've got I, I got something prepared in front of me. Uh, my oh, first G.I. Yeah, Joe figure came out of one of those four packs. This one came with the Kraken and came with a pilot of the, of the wolf, the, 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 dark, the black uniform uh, Cobra Trooper figure That's cool. and the his driver um, this was the only figure with uh, weapons in that one so that was my first G.I. Joe figure really ah, nice. uh, my favorite Joe one of my favorites is Bazook hey. <laughs> I really love this guy you know he's, he's, he's yeah as a kid I liked him I still like him he's uh, the character if I would be able to go to Joe Fest next year and if I could bring a cosplay that I could easily bring around, I'd probably bring something like this around uh, with me because it's, it's easy to cosplay and it's a fun character to to do that. <laughs> Hans, hey Hans, where's there your beard? Is. Your beard is gone. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's Hans Chow's little boy. It's his son. <laughs> oh my god! Is, is oh. Hans is Hans short for handsome? Handsome Chow. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something my mother would say. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's the one who told me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's... yeah, so Chris, you got yours in a four pack. I did not know that they mixed them that way. Yeah, so only for four. short, for short uh, moment, we got those four packs around in the toy stores over here where they. I don't know why he did it. I didn't really care as a kid. It was cool. You get four for a very decent price. And usually one of the four figures came with a backpack and a gun. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, I remember that. But very short after that, in 87, we got all the Joe stuff. And that was great. <laughs> like the, yeah, that was great. We went to town after that. Uh, my favorite Cobras. Um well, yeah, my first mail-in is definitely one of them. Right. I do like, I do like Chrome Dome, but I, I never got him back in the day. But I liked my hooded Cobra Commander. That's such a cool, cool guy. Cobra tend to rule the world. He's so cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I love this guy. And as a tribute to Paul from Joe Burke, I'm going to try to do Storm Shadow impression here. He does it so good. A ninja doesn't use the weapon. A ninja is the weapon. I don't know. Nice. Paul, does, Paul does it better. That was good. That was Paul does it better it. than me, I think. But it, this, yeah, I love Storm Shadow, even though the head is maybe a little bit out of front. As a kid, this guy was way out there. I wanted to be a ninja. Who wouldn't yeah. want to be a ninja back then? Or maybe somebody wants to be a certain Sarge. What are your favorites, say? So I wonder. Uh, well, yeah, I never, I never got uh, to own a Sergeant Slaughter as a kid, uh, but he was always my childhood hero. Uh, Space Commanders reminded me of a uh, of a story that I had though, where I couldn't find Duke anywhere for a long time, and so I ended up picking up Chuckles and made mm. Chuckles like a casual Friday Duke. Uh, you know, he wasn't he wasn't quite in uniform, uh, and that became my Duke for a very long time. Uh, he was never Chuckles in my in my playtime. It was Duke. Um, but as far as my favorite uh, Cobra, it was Crocmaster. Wow! Uh, because anyone that came with an animal companion was already elevated in my books. Right? It was like it was like a bonus character. It's uh, the the Cobras never named their animals so you sort of had you could just name them whatever you like uh where the joes always if they came with an animal they named it i think maybe did they name the dolphin that came with wetsuit was that wetsuit did wetsuit come with a dolphin was i think it, it was deep six. No, deep, it six. Was deep six deep six deep six deep six dolphin did he have a name eco <laughs> yeah echo <laughs> yeah. Echo. one of those two they look like yeah. a mutated yeah. they look like a mutated like zombie dolphin, didn't you, or something like that? You yeah, like yeah. A shark. yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it was supposed to be a killer whale, uh, really, originally, and they just made it a, a straight up dolphin. But that it would have been a huge uh, pet character, yeah. though. 
Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's oversized for a dolphin, but undersized for a killer whale, right? Right. Yeah. But when has when has GI Joe really gone for scale? You look at those scorpions with the desert scorpions; those are way out of scale. <laughs> and, and, unless, of course, they are uh, genetically modified by Doctor Naked Pants or whatever he was called. <laughs> <laughs> or was that was that uh, Stratos? That was yeah, <laughs> Stratos. If I looked as jacked as Doctor Mindbender, I wouldn't wear a shirt either. Damn right. Just Thank all you, you need is a flowing cape. And Capes a, are cool. Like, the capes are cool. Uh, and, and is this considered a cape or is that part of the hood? That's uh, considered a cape with this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, we went a little custom with that because you know he doesn't have a cape, the the battle armor Skeletor. But right, I like capes, and he looks mm. Skeletor. If I were Skeletor, I would want to have a cape because that makes him look more important or more, you know. Uh, <laughs> Did Croc Master's Croc have a name? That's about the only Cobra I can remember coming with an animal companion. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't uh, come with a name. I'm sure I did name mine. Uh, Finback was the dolphin. Oh, that's lazy riding, isn't it? If they named it Finback, that's a bit of a... <laughs> so I the, think in recent the other... years they gave the Croc a name. Yeah, uh, yeah, something like, like Fiona or some some other female Fiona, name. Yeah. So like oh, wait, that. wait, I have it right here. Oh, cool. It is Fiona. It is Fiona. Yes. All right. Shout out to hey. Fiona. After, after the yoga from Shrek. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> is that the is that the latest one or is that going back into the mythos? Oh. Of the no, I think I think they just named it the classified one. I think oh, it was okay. just names for classified. I don't remember uh, the alligator having any names or crocodile having any names back when we were kids. Well, it didn't have it on the on the toy that I had. But uh, yeah. the other cobra, the other cobra ones, other than the scorpion, someone came with a a stingray, I think. Another one came with oh, a eel. There was a barracuda. Oh, or was that a robot a barracuda. barracuda? That's right, barracuda. barracuda. Yeah. Not an eel. barracuda. On the two eel. came with a barracuda. Right. And the stingray uh, came with Hydro Viper. Yeah. Right. True. Good. Good. I knew we brought you on for a reason. <laughs> uh, I was imagining that. And, the... uh... Oh, sorry. Oh, and uh, we had the Warthog with uh, Norga Hyde. What were you saying, Gaz? Yes. I was going to say the, 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 the scorpion, I always imagined it being some like <clears throat> robotic scorpion because it was so big. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's how we played with it. And let's uh, not forget Voltar came... with his turkey vulture. True. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Good one. Yeah. And that wasn't named either. Uh, I guess I didn't care enough, right? <laughs> you could have and named it something creative like William. <laughs> <laughs> William the Turkey Vulture. <laughs> I like that. It's, Go it's get him, William, William from now on. <laughs> <laughs> William. It's done. It's named. <laughs> Hans, have you got a favorite G.I. Joe and Cobra that you want to share with us? Uh, I, I do. Um, Tunnel Rat would probably be my favorite G.I. Yeah, Joe because, because Trinidad. Um, sure. He's coming out and classified, which has me kind of excited. I'm interested to see what, what they do with him. Um, he also appeared, as of right now, he's the most frequently appearing character in G.I. Joe, which is great because he, he was in Sigma 6. He was in Valor vs. Venom. He was in Renegades. He was in everything. He, I, I think he was pretty consistent, and I like that. Granted, they made him from Brooklyn, but you know, we all know where he's really from. Uh, sure. With regards to uh, Cobras, I really like the Alley Viper, mm. which, of course, would then make the classified Alley Viper like the most difficult thing to find. But luckily, Gaz landed me one. And there's something just badass about a dude in it with a shield and a gun. And there's just, mm. I don't know, there's something right. nice about it. And then he appeared in Operation Dragonfire, and, which you so nobly put up for the rest of us to see. And oh, it was, yeah. he. He was great in that as well. Those, those are nice. probably be my favorite too. Can yeah. I tell you a secret? No. No, never mind. Okay, go for it. <laughs> yes, please. Right. So everybody, and I've been dying to tell this since I got into like via uh, into into the GI Joe community recently. I was like, I've always wanted to know what everybody's favorite vehicle was because I, my I favorite. Just wanna, vehicle... A quick shout out to Michael yeah. Schaefer, who's only popped in quickly to say hello uh, and salutations to Chris. Chris Cheers, Michael. Michael. Am Cheers. I pronouncing that right? Miwa? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry, Chow. 
Hans no, Charles Poitini. So I just uh, I always thought, not thought, but I always knew my favorite vehicle was the Battle Bunker, and I don't know if that was ever anybody's favorite other than I mine. Like I just it, want yeah. to know if that was, you know, a common thing. Well, I, I think that uh, if you were sitting within the Battle Bunker, you'd have the worst position. This is the only <laughs> bunker where it's safer to be outside than it is than inside. inside. <laughs> but uh, I, it's such a shame that they didn't create the Battle Bunker to be armoured on the outside and yet be like a troop transport on the inside. I think that would have been so much better. I, I like that it's got the transformability, uh, if I could just make up a word real quick. Uh, that I think that is is part of the part of the fun of it, but I just prefer like if you see like three or four of those stationed, you know that I think that just looks pretty badass. But uh, yeah. uh, other than that, I I don't know anyone else into the battle bunker. Nope, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> just us, um, just us, buddy. <laughs> You can help but notice Space Commander's space helmet with all the lights and stuff. That's really cool, man. Yeah, it is. From the future. Yeah, my ears keep changing color. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was part of your emotions. Uh, it picks up on whatever your emotion you're on. Uh, you're envious. <laughs> yes, like, you're like, a, like, a like a mood ring for my entire head. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when I said, like, Actually, when you turned blue because it made him sad. <laughs> well, when Zazel, when you mentioned uh, Duke just now, that actually reminded me, sort of in, in relation to Chris's earlier question, um, I actually did, uh, um, my, my Duke figure came in a, a boxed set. It wasn't four figures, though. It was um, uh, three figures and a vehicle. It was the, the Cobra okay. uh, Claw, um, mm -hmm. and uh, that came with a, a Cobra pilot in it, and uh, two other figures, which were... Um, ripcord and duke so that was kind of a, a kind of a box set with you know several figures in it but it was it was uh that i think the main selling point was that that was that there was a vehicle in there so it's not quite so, not quite what you were talking about but something similar uh so wallaroo had the shark tank and just beat the crap out of that thing as a kid i'm not familiar with the shark tank uh that must be after my collecting days. Mm. Masters of the universe. Isn't that that shark that like uh, oh, land shark? Looks like a no. Looks like a hammerhead. Is that what he's talking about? That hammerhead ve cobra ha hammerhead oh. shark cobra vehicle. Um, I think it is called the hammerhead from 1988. Yeah, right. like Got to be later than that. It's 89, I think. I think we're talking uh, hammerhead. Hammerhead. There it is. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm like I even even giving it the correct name. Uh, still not really that familiar with it. Uh, I'll have to look Joe that Berg up. Joe did a review of it. It's a, a beautiful vehicle. Oh, mm. Yeah. Oh well. I, re I recently I recently. Sorry, Joe Berg guys. I'll go back and check that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does that have the um? Is that the one with the clear bubble front? The well, that's front the bug. Window? That's the bug. Yeah. Right, I know nothing about. <laughs> I know nothing about anything. No. Little submarines. Little submarine. Yep, he's got it. Little submarines. Okay. It had five little submersibles. Oh, that's cool. That's value for money right there. True. And if you if you go on 3D Joe's and you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page with uh, the hammerhead, they have a talk with the designer. The hammerhead was originally supposed to be a submarine. But they were worried okay. about mold and stuff building up inside. So the mm -hmm. so the manager was like, "Well, just throw it? wheels on it." So they threw wheels <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And it does so, actually still possess that the like a... floats if you put it in the pool. That sounds a bit like the Palatoy uh, Sea Line they had for Action Force. It was. Um... Uh, this is one that my younger brother had. I didn't have it, I'm afraid. But um, it was like a submarine uh, with two uh, two pods on top, which you could fit the figures in, and the canopies would close yeah. down. Um, came with this guy right here, Dolphin. Cuts and uh, the chat, on the USA sides... Dolphin Salvo are some of my favorite Joe figures. Uh, I, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I have at least two or three of those in my collection right now. Classified, where's my super sticker? 
Sorry, go on, Space <laughs> Commander. Uh, I was just going to say the sea line on the side of it, it had two little pods, which would you could put figures on them in sort of like motorbike kind of position. And um, the idea was that they would detach, and um, they were like small submarines as well. Mm. Right. So I don't think I had... Codes, you know, that I haven't seen. It sounds like... It's, it just makes it the other side of... It makes me sound like that side of the world was a different universe when it came to toys. I'm sure if I was to go and check some of the vintage stuff from Europe, it would be like, wow! Hey, so, Scuba Chris, Pete with the link. Thank you very much, Scuba Pete. The sea lion. I'll check that out. Line, Chris, yeah. uh, Space Commander sent me some uh, interesting Action Force audio files, and one of them had to do with a little competition that they were running for Action Force. Uh, Space Commander, do you want to talk us through that one if you know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, sure. A um, uh, quick shout out to Kraken's Creations, who, who we mentioned previously. Uh, he's on YouTube and he's on eBay. Uh, great guy. And um, uh, as Zayl and I have, have mentioned before, they um, uh, back in the days of Palatoy, they started doing these cassette tapes because um, we didn't have a, a cartoon or anything at the time. We just had the comic book mm -hmm. and the cassettes. And then um, as uh, the Hasbro characters came in, uh, they sort of became more Hasbro-centric. Um, and uh, I've still got my original cassettes, um, but, uh, you know, as, as they're getting older and older and I'm, you know, worried about damaging them, thankfully, uh, Kraken Creations uh, has made digital files uh, of these cassettes. Um, I also, I didn't, I didn't mention previously when we were talking about this, so I'll quickly bring it up now. You had the uh, Ladybird book and cassettes. I don't know if you guys had them in other countries, but you had these like little right. hardback books mm. um, and you would read along to the cassette. And um, yeah, it was yeah, actually yeah. on those those cassettes they they used uh, they took some of the GI Joe episodes that had been redubbed into you know Action Force and then um, uh, sort of developed yet, yet again a further iteration to this book and cassette format, and it was actually on those cassettes where you get to hear um, uh, you get to hear uh, Lady J and Scarlet and Flint and those characters speaking with English accents. It's kind of weird. I think I mentioned <laughs> on one of the previous ones. I thought that was on. One of the uh, Hasbro cassettes, but it wasn't. It was actually one of the Ladybird cassettes where you get to hear um, Lady J and Scarlet. But anyway, um, getting back to the point, um, the uh, what was Special Corps? It was called um, Steel Brigade, wasn't it, in the States, I think? Right, when uh, when Brigade, Hasbro... Yeah, yeah. That's right. When, when, when Hasbro took over Action Force fully, um, over in the UK, uh, Steel Brigade was known as Special Corps. And there was this... Uh, record you know the old-fashioned you know seven inch record that, uh, that you would um put on your record player and listen to and it was uh, a message uh supposedly from general hawk although because it was uh, an english actor trying to do an american accent he was called okay. general hawk because of course you'd put a letter r where there isn't a letter r wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> and in it uh, <laughs> he has a awesome he has a uh uh, a competition for the kids to take part in. Um, and the idea is you design a, an action force vehicle for the special call. Only the way he describes what the vehicle needs to be, uh, he, he sort of describes it. It needs to be able to ca carry several troops. So it needs to be a box shape, perhaps an armored metal box. And it needs to be an all terrain vehicle. So maybe it needs to be on tank treads. And uh, it probably needs to have rocket launchers on it. So in a way, he's kind of leading the listener to design something which is basically the warthog. Now, right. Zazel and I were talking about this. Our <laughs> thinking exactly is, because, <laughs> be, yeah, uh, our thinking is that because of, um, because of uh, ha the Hasbro toys were now coming in and replacing the Palatoy ones, the warthog was probably, you know, had already been designed and made like a year or two earlier in the States. They yeah, were now yeah. shipping it over to the UK and um, I think and we think that uh, basically they wanted some kid to think that he had designed the warthog and say, here, <laughs> we made the toy that you designed, yeah. when in actual Goodbye. fact it had been designed two, <laughs> two years earlier in the yeah. States, you know. <laughs> oh. Oh. And uh, uh, Kraken Creations, wonderfully, he, he uh, took all these digitized files and uh, let, us, uh, let us have access to them. So I've been sharing them with Hazel and uh, bringing them up to date on the, uh, the early Palatoy characters, then the transitional right. characters, and then eventually the Hasbro characters. 
So, Chris, did you have much other than that uh, four pack that you mentioned before that came with Rakondo? Did you have much in the way of Action Force? No, before then? negative, negative. No, so nothing. Was I... your go on? No, I, I can't remember <clears throat> seeing any Action Force really in the stores in the, where I live, and it, it right. isn't a big town where I live where I grew up, so that wasn't that much around maybe in the bigger cities there would have been some but not in the toy stores in my area i started yeah. noticing them with those four packs and they weren't called gi joe at the time and then in 87 you know we got the gi joe logo and everything and so that's when i you know really got into it so yeah so your your version of um Recondo could be the australian version we had uh we had our own Australian version called Digger over here, but I do believe yeah. I do believe that uh Rakondo in Action Force was Australian. Is that correct, Space Commander? Uh, absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah. Um as I've mentioned in previous shows, um we didn't know to begin with that uh the cartoon that was being sent over on videotape was actually G.I. Mm. Joe and they just changed the name. Right. Um so all these characters that we were seeing in the cartoon uh, that we thought we knew from the toys and the comics were now all American, um, which yeah. was kind of a surprise to us. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, when Rakondo appears, we, I was totally expecting him to say, G'day, mate. Um, <laughs> but instead he had this kind of uh, thick, thick American accent. But, yeah, uh, even even when it was uh, still Palatoy, um, before the Hasbro takeover, the version of Rakondo that was brought out uh, in the UK, um, mm -hmm. it was, he had the... He had the uh, the uh, canoe from the SAS Silent Attack um, box set, which had oh, come wow. out um, cool. a few years previously with a different figure. It came with the, the SAS figure. Um, yeah, he, he came with that. And uh, he was this Australian guy called Rakondo. I, I think it's, you know, I thought it was fun to hear from Zazel that in Japan, I'm sorry, not Japan, what am I saying? <laughs> in Australia, <laughs> um, he was called uh, Digger, but it was basically the same character. It was an Australian guy uh, based on Rakondo. So, uh, Chris, does, oh, yeah. does that mean that you does that mean that you never had the these kind of action force figures? Does that mean that you you only ever had the sort of uh, as I call them the bendy figures? No, no. Like I said, we we I saw the Kraken and I saw some figures from that I definitely recognized from uh, from uh, Zed Force and stuff like that. So those were in those. Oh, right. So okay. We had them. So it could be that I didn't notice them or they were only for a brief time here in the Netherlands in the area where I grew up. Because, But I, I have no recollection of seeing those single-carded as they right. were sold in the UK, of course. Uh, we, had Action oh, Force. Cool, we had Action Force for a little while here in Australia, but I don't remember ever seeing them as Action Force. I only ever remember seeing them as G.I. Joe. But I grew up in a very small town in the Northern Territory. So we were lucky to have clean water to be fair <laughs> let alone <laughs> action figures so uh so with yeah. um with digger though he was only called digger in the australian version of the comic digger. which was okay. um reprints of the gi joe um but in black and white as far as the card is con uh, concerned he was only a condo but we were talking to ron rudat and ron rudat said that he was meant to be australian uh, and somewhere along the line they they switched it up but he's still Australian in my books. Yeah. Ah, the Kraken. There he the is. The Kraken is fast becoming my favorite action force <laughs> action figure. It's just so crazy. I've got to figure I out. I know you're also how... you're a fan of this guy oh, too. Yeah. Muton, who I called Muton. Mutton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the first and you won't be the last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Uh, Chris, have you got a like a holy grail as far as uh, action figure collecting is concerned that you don't have in your collection yet? Uh, action figure, so not G.I. Joe specifically. Um, no, I don't, don't, have my, don't have in my collection. Um, not really. I'm, I have to say I'm really happy where I am right now. I'm happy what I got. And when I see something that I don't have at the time, then I get it if I want it, if the price is right. Of course, that's not oh, really... Sure. There are some Transformers I like to add to the collection, but Transformers aren't really your typical action figures, I suppose. Now I think I'm 
quite happy You're where maybe content? maybe a chrome dome commander at some point uh, yeah yeah I, I don't know maybe something like that maybe the other version of sarge at some point but not really i wouldn't call those holy grails like that you wouldn't call sarge a holy grail what what, <laughs> what? do you know where you are <laughs> what <laughs> not for me oh i have i have this and this is the this for me is the sarge this is the one i always wanted and when i've got two of these because i like this figure so much yeah and, and that that is the sarge for me my favorite that's how i want him represented in my collection so the the other versions of sarge they are pretty cool and awesome but it's not something like oh holy grill i need to get that if i get that i'm gonna be so so but yeah i'm happy well, where i am apparent. I'm if really you've happy. got triple T side, you've got you've got one of the best, mm. as far as I'm concerned. Thanks for the super sticker classified. Uh, I'll have to go back and have a look and see which one it is. I can't I can't tell in the chat, but thank you. Um, yeah, so yeah, that that version of Sarge is is one of the best. I can't I keep going backwards and forwards between uh, which one is better out of the USA one. And the triple T one, I think the USA one marginally makes it to the top, just because he wore that outfit in real life, like mm. when he was doing the commercials, and he even wrestled in that outfit. So it's kind of cool to see that. Uh, it was two characters blowing trumpets. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, but I think I think we can all agree that the Marauders Sarge is out of the four original ones. It's pretty. It's pretty poor. Not just. The colors are okay. I don't mind the blue, to be fair, but the the plastic quality is just atrocious. Yeah, is it? Okay. Yeah, and any of those um, Sergeant Slaughter figures were so hard to find in the UK. Um, yeah. So I didn't actually have him as a kid. I only got him in later years. And, and of course, yeah. he was called Sergeant Slammer with this completely different <laughs> voice. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, that's yeah, that was the best impression of Sergeant <laughs> yeah. Slammer I've Slammer. ever heard. Well, I, I had this idea the other day. I thought, that's a really good idea. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is it a good idea to me? Would it be a good idea to anybody else? I don't know. It might just be funny to me. But I was thinking, what if, uh, you know, next time you're talking to Sarge um, and you get some, like, uh, little sound bites of his he can use, every time he says slaughter or G.I. Joe, <laughs> we have, we have, we have space commander here doing the slammer voice <laughs> just, just the odd word here and there not not complete sentences or anything like that just the odd word uh, I, I don't know would that be funny or does that <laughs> so space commander what i'll do is uh if we can get some pre-recorded sound bites of you using sergeant slammer voice and next time, <laughs> next time I'm lucky enough to have Sergeant Slaughter on my channel, I'll just completely annoy the hell out of him by throwing. <laughs> yes, that's definitely going to be worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've got um, in the in the next episode of the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship, uh, I'm going to have Sarge voice um, Super Cop. So yeah i've uh, Very cool. i've already i'm already voicing sergeant slaughter in that so he's 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 pushed out of that role he can do super cop and be happy with it chris are you into wrestling at all yeah uh, more back in the day than now to be honest yeah same yeah yeah do but, you have a favorite uh, wrestler doesn't have to be sarge you don't have to no i have do have uh, ricky <laughs> ricky the dragon steamboat definitely oh yes yes I, uh, I just ordered his Masters of the Universe figure. Oh, I'm cool. waiting for that to come in the mail. Uh, that one looks pretty cool. That's got the, the dragon from the Skeletor. Dragon Blaster, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward for that one to, to show up. But, uh, Chris, every time I have a guest on, I ask them to, uh, to do a voice of a character, Ricky <laughs> the Dragon, in the, um, in the Slaughterhouse. So you'll have to... You'll, you'll have to if you don't mind, I'll hit you up at a later date to, to do a voice for a character for me. I would love to, yeah. I'm going to get Hans to voice um, my Slaughterhouse version of um, Tunnel Rat, but I'm sure he won't <laughs> mind. Gaz, Gaz has already denied my offer. But I think if I get him all lick it up, he might do it. <laughs> yeah. What he, what he doesn't know is that I'll just use sound bites from this and, and cut it <laughs> 
That's why I'm not saying much. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Who, who's that wrestler that doesn't say much? Oh, Oops. that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Do, do you already have somebody for the twins? Because that, they have some sort of European accent going there. So that will be interesting. No. For the twins, which ones? Are we talking about the... Max and Zima. Yes. Oh, right. Oh, I thought you were talking wrestlers. I was going to say, are we talking about the Bushwhackers? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Talking G.I. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, I don't. I haven't. I haven't yet. But the Crimson Twins will be making an appearance very soon. In fact, they are going to be uh, some some uh, people that are puppeteering in the background. So I won't say too much. But Chris, you can you can voice the twins if uh, if you're if you're offering to. That'd be awesome. Yeah, would would be honored. That would be fun. See how that goes. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, two for the price of can, one. Can, that's right. <laughs> It's uh yeah there you go you can be Kane, Gaz. It's a quiet role but uh, you'll still get credited. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You can be Thank Snake you. Eyes. All right, I'll be Snake Eyes. Done. Oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Did anybody else see the Mega Construct Snake Mountain, or was that just me? I saw it. it. The which one? Mega Constructs the oh, well Mega. Yeah. Snake Mountain. Mega blocks, mega blocks, I believe. Mega yeah. blocks, yeah. Was there well, something they... in it? On the. Uh, I've seen, I've seen, in person, I've seen the actual um, Castle Grayskull one. Uh, that looked pretty cool. Not enough for me to pick it up. I've seen the photos recently of that um, uh, Snake Mountain. I really hope they bring a Snake Mountain to the Origins line because that would be yeah. an easy yeah. pick up if yes, they do. Please. Yeah, with something in it on the interior this time. Oh, you don't like yeah, the hollow yeah. box. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to. I'm probably going to be saving after I finish saving for this trip to Joe Fest next year. I'm probably going to start saving to get a Snake Mountain Mega Construct set because it is cool. It is cool. I need yeah, a lot of photos. So I'm going to try and make it to Joe Fest too. Sounds like Chris is going to try and make it to Joe Fest. We're all going to make try. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How I should, cool I would that be? I'm going to spectacular. order that thing. I'm not going to. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to try it. Just do it. Just do it. Do uh, it we're all going to sleep on uh, Gaz's just, couch. Just voice. Do, do, oh, it's going to be a long. It's going to be a long trip down, Gaz. <laughs> 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 is, it, is it? Well, well, it just we've invited ourselves. Hey, anytime. I have a question for Chris, though. My favorite, my favorite section of your collection is the Lego space stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah. right. Yes. And um, yeah, I knew he's yeah. have it right there. It is. Oh, there goes so, <laughs> have have you have you seen the um release in um August for Lego with the new um Galaxy Explorer? No, I haven't seen it. No, no I haven't seen it either. It's no. It's Hans, is it real? Ha, yeah, Hans pointed it out to me. I put a pre-sale in for it. It looks it's just like a more. It's doesn't. It's, I think it's a lot larger than the original. It's really nice. Wow, that would yeah. be amazing. yeah, yeah. So we'll know where to, to check put it. it but I, I it's, love on, my... it's on the Lego on here. It's on the Lego store site. Yep. So I don't know I don't... if it's the same for you. I don't collect uh, space Lego anymore. I do I do Western stuff. I go back oh, and cool. pick up all the old Western stuff. Uh, I've got an old Western town that I got to put back together. But I do appreciate the space stuff and the castle stuff. I just haven't purchased any of it. Have uh, you seen so this extensive? Fans. Have you seen this extensive collection of like, space Legos? No, I have to go back and check it out. It's incredible. Uh, Scuba Pete's going to bring the bourbon uh, <laughs> again. <laughs> here, is, is anyone here not a drinker? I'm, I don't yeah. drink I'm the normal. drinker. Well, you're our first target, Hans. <laughs> yeah, I get to drive. I get to see no oh, okay. drive. That's my job. Same uh, here. Same uh, here. Always driving. Actually, would you be able to drive? What side of the road do you drive on, Mr. Miwa? Uh, we drive drink on enough, the, it doesn't matter, right? We drive on the wrong side of the road. On the So right you're like side. me then, on the left? No, we're on the right side. I think when I come over to the UK, I finally have a feeling, okay, they, they know how to drive on the right side of the road here. But when I'm so, back okay, in the so Netherlands... When you, 
So when you're driving forward, you are on the right. I'm on the right side of the right lane. Yeah. But in America, you're on the left. They're also on the right, right? Oh, well, I'm on the wrong <laughs> side on the left then. In in Trinidad, Japan, in uh, the UK, they drive on the left side. And that makes so much more sense for me to drive on the left side of the road. But okay, maybe that's okay. just me. I don't know. Right. Well, as long as you're on my side here, we're fine. I'm on your side. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I don't drive at all. Uh, you can't drink and drive, so why bother? Mm. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> uh, I'll step out for a minute, and when I return, I'm amazed by the de-aging technology used on Ken. Uh, <laughs> that's, either, that's either an insult to Hans, or that's a compliment to Ken. <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, think, I think I'm older than Ken. <laughs> uh, I think everyone's older than Ken. But <laughs> whatever, whatever Hans is smoking, we need some. It's working. We're at the hour and a half mark, so we'll, we'll end our stream here, guys. Chris... Uh, I do want to just uh, finish up on you. Uh, what, what have you got coming up? We'll finish up on you. That's such a bad term. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> like naked stratos. I want to finish up on you. You were thinking about naked stratos again. Yeah. You? <laughs> <laughs> he was. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm geez. not going to draw that, but. Uh oh. Oh, you should draw that. So you should draw it. Uh, <laughs> as unintentional as that was. Uh, Chris, why don't you first of all, Chris, uh, tell us uh, where we can find you and tell us what you've got coming up in the pipeline. Uh, you can find me on Chasing 80 Stories together with Jeff and Pete. Um, we're taking a little bit of a break after Iconic Con. So at least I promised the boys from oh, you take your time, do something else. You know, we, we worked hard for Iconic Con, take your time. But meantime, I'm editing away at new ideas and, and stuff I want to put on the channel. There's going to be some cosplay stuff coming, maybe a bit more with Doctor Strange. I want to try that. Maybe some music because I'm here, so back in a band again. And I don't know, whatever I fancy in my room, uh, that's how it usually works. Uh, I look around, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like, okay, I'm into Zoids now, so I'm going to do a video on Zoids or oh, maybe nice. I, I look at this Starcom thing so I'm, i want to do something with starcom and maybe together with jody in the future so i've got plenty of fun ideas for the future to come uh and we got some toy hunts lined up so I'm, i might share that soon and there's a video in the pipeline with pete and jeff that i edited before iconic uh at the same time we were working on the iconic content so maybe that's going to come up soon too so awesome there's I'm stuff coming <laughs> Looking forward to seeing that Iron Man cosplay when you get that put together. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. That's going to be interesting. See, I, I wanted to make sure I can dance in it. Perfect. So that's, that was an important thing for me. It's custom made to my size. So that, that yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what I can do and what I can't do wearing that armor because it's going to be a full armor. That's going to be a first. But, but yeah, it's... Must as, might I say, such a pleasure being on, on your channel, Xezo, and, and such a wonderful audience and wonderful people on, on, on the chat. It's lovely meeting you now for the first time, Space Commander, on the chat. And Hans and I, we chatted before guests. I know you're from the Berg Force, so it's, it's like old mates here. It's yeah. I've had a blast tonight. Uh, well, thanks, buddy. It, yeah, thanks so much, mate. It was an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, it's we do try to keep it very casual here at the slaughterhouse, uh, where we can just hang out and chat toys. Uh, no pressure, you know, on anyone to, uh, you know, perform like a circus monkey. But thank you for spending time with us. You've got a, you've, you've gained a subscriber in Bob Squad. Uh, he says, I'm finally, finally gonna subscribe to Chasing 80 Toys. I don't know uh, <laughs> if, that, if that's a joke. Uh, yeah. Bob uh, is a great uh, mate. Bob has a wonderful yeah, channel as well. It did, it did read. It did read like a joke, <laughs> but um, good on you, Bob. Anyhow, he uh, sometimes makes a joke. He's known to sometimes pop a joke now and then. Is he ever funny, or is he just sometimes? Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, it's we're going to Canada next 
for the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship. <laughs> yeah, he's on board. I thought I thought so. It did read like it did read like it was a joke. But you, you uh, know I love you, Bob, and singing Land Shark. That's it. He actually has a shark as a pet. Do you believe that? And he sings. Well, that's pretty cool. True story. True story. All right, if you haven't already, uh, do please go and subscribe to Chasing 80s Toys. Please leave a like on this video. Subscribe here if you haven't already. No pressure to, but uh, God, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, I'm a big fan of, of your work, Chris, and everyone over at Chasing 80s Toys. So it's a, it was an absolute pleasure and an honor to have you uh, over at the Slaughterhouse. I hope you've enjoyed your time. Uh, time is precious, so I appreciate you spending some of that with us today. Everyone else, thank you for joining us as well. Space Commander Gaz and Hans Chow. Hans bringing some of that handsomeness. Gaz, oh, Gaz is the most handsome of all of us, but uh, he hides it behind uh, a little cartoon character. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate it. But anyway, we'll leave it at that. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you're dismissed. See you.